Many recipes are now listing ingredients in grams and ounces. Uh, I can't do that, which can be confusing because <laughs> I'm so not good at math. All right, it'd be confusing to the average cook. So here to break down the difference between weight and volume measurements, culinary anthropologist and food nerd, our very own Dan Kohler. Okay. Call you food nerd. Well, well, it's an okay. She calls like you food it. nerd. Well, it's okay. Well, food nerd. It is okay. It is okay. 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 Ah. All, right. Yeah. All right. So measurement tools vary from tool to tool. Do they not, Dan? Uh, they, they, really <laughs> measure, they really vary from country to country. So yeah. we, we think of a, a cup as being sort of an empirical measurement, right? That a, a cup is a cup and it never changes. Changes, but that's actually not true. A cup in America is uh, valued at 250 milliliters. But if you look at uh, Australia and New Zealand, they rate a cup at 240 milliliters. And in the UK, we're looking at 285. And in Japan, it's 200. This is why we're never going to get along. With the rest Your marriage is what never going to work out. I don't, I don't <laughs> milliliters. Milliliters. Oh, milliliters. I don't even know what milliliters are either. What are they? It's and a, a milliliter is a measurement of volume. So cups are, are how we measure volume. And what I want to look at today is three ways that we can sort of disprove volume as the as the best way to bake. Because right now in America, we cook by volume, but cooking by weight is better. So first we're going to look at the tool. The tool is inconsistent, right? We've said that a cup is not a cup. So right here, we've got this is a cup in, uh, in Japan, in, in the UK, this is a cup in Japan. These are very different. Okay. Now we want to look at the ingredient itself. So we're measuring flour, right? Okay. So as you measure flour, um, flour is essentially just a, a, a stack of a bunch of little, little particles of flour, little grains. And in between them, there's a lot of air. Now, air changes on a day-to-day -day basis. So on a really humid day, air is compact. It's dense. And that means when you measure a cup of flour, you're actually getting more flour in there than you would on a very dry wow. day. Mm -hmm. okay? Well, it's humid here today. So we've, so we've disproven the tool itself is inconsistent. Now we've disproven the ingredient is also inconsistent. Now I want to look at the relationship between tool and ingredient. So we're going to do a little experiment. Christina, I want you to fill a cup with a spoon. If you could use a spoon to, to fill that cup and then, and then scrape it off and we're going to weigh it here. I want you to tell me how many grams we've got. And Ken, at the same time, could you take a cup and scoop it in there and fill it up? The way I do every morning The way you do every morning when you make pancakes. <laughs> now you at home, you, my guess is that most of you scoop your flour out. And we're going to see here, the way you fill your cup makes a huge difference in how much you get in there. But what about an egg? Is an egg an egg an egg? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. An egg is an egg. An egg is roughly an egg. Wait, zero. Wait, now, are we but also, zero? when you put your, your pot on there, you have to put it to zero. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. All right. So how, so. Much, how many grams do we have in that cup? Or ounces? What, what does it say? 2.5. 2. No, 2. I can't say it's upside down. No, it's not. Uh, okay. Oh, it's on? 2.6. It's 2. Point 2.7. 2.7 ounces. ounces. Great. Now let's. Now, Ken, will you do the same it's with my yours. scoop like I do? Wow. What is it? 3.1. Do you see? So they both measured a cup, and we have drastically different measures. That's like a 10 percent difference. So you'll see. You guys have cakes in front of you right now. And I want you to take do a taste test. The one, the one in the one that's lighter. Actually, you can. I see. could tell just by looking. Right. So one of these was measured with weight, and one of these was measured with volume. And you can see, when you bake cakes at home, if you want consistency and reproducibility, you really need to go with weight. Because 175 grams is always 175 grams. One cup is not always one cup. So we've got two so cakes here. What if you use the wow. same way of measuring with a cup, but the but the humidity was different in the air, or, or was different because the air? You said that that's different. Yeah. So if so if it's a, if it's a more humid day, and I and I get yeah. A so you could you could cook the same thing, bake the same thing, and have different it, results. Yes, right. you can cook the same thing and have different results. So using weight that is a way to increase this. Look, this is how you do it in a chem lab, right? When you're doing a science experiment, reproducibility and consistency are the most important things to a yeah. scientist. And baking is a science. It is, but in baking. It's it's best to do the weights rather than the Absolutely, volume. best yeah. to do weights because yeah. weight is reproducible. So I want to show you how a scale so works. One of these is totally dense and having the other yeah. light and fluffy. Is that oh. a yes. sort of flower, yeah. right? Yeah. So one one was the one that I did with weight, or the one that I did with volume has too much, it has too many ingredients in it. It's yeah. too much of each thing, right? Mm -hmm. right? The one that's done by weight is perfect. Right. So here you can see on my scale, I've got a bowl here and it's already set to zero. So this is this is my argument for it, the other argument. You don't have to use as many tools, right? I'm not dirtying cups and tablespoons. I need I need 175 grams of flour. Wow. But that machine's on grams, it's not on right? Great. Oh, yeah. I got now I got 194, right? So okay. I, I went a little bit over. So all I have to do, take a little bit out. Uh -huh. 180. Great. Now I'm gonna zero it. I need 200 grams of sugar. Oh, so you don't have, I thought you'd have to measure, Each put it one. in a separate bowl, just no. zero it out. You see what I'm doing here? So this, yeah. this means I'm not dirtying extra, extra tools. 
That's a great scale, by the way. I use that in baking all the time. That's smart. Right? And so another thing that we need to look at, you know, when you have an ingredient like grated carrots, a cup of grated carrots makes almost no sense. Think of how much air is in there. Do you, does, does the chef want you to pack it all the way down or not, right? You actually don't know. 13 ounces or 170 grams of carrots is a real measurement. So this actually produces consistent results, and you can really see this in the two cakes I've got over here. This is the one that I measured by weight, and this is the one I measured by volume. And you can see, look, the, the, the center of the one yeah. done by volume has fallen in. It's a little yeah. gummy in the middle. Hmm. But what do you do if you're like, my cookbooks are all in cups and That's all that, that. Yeah. so what do yeah. you do? Now, there are, there are some conversions out there, but the, the truth is, you wanna start looking for better cookbooks. Ouch. Oh. Ouch. Because, because look, all of <laughs> these chefs cookbook. who are all of these chefs who are cooking in their industrial kitchens, they're cooking by weight. They're not cooking by volume. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've, you can find all you can find all this. Most I mean really most and most chefs now have websites. So if you go, buy a cookbook by a chef you really like and their cookbooks have everything by volume, go to their website. They may have listed it out also by weight. What if they're what if uh, if you, whether it's volume or by weight, it's zero. <laughs> it weighs oh nothing. God. What if it weighs oh nothing? My. Oh my! Oh, I'm just saying it's zeroed, it's zeroed out. You zeroed it. You I zeroed, zeroed it out. Can you taste the difference? Is there a difference in taste or yes, just the density? Yes, it tastes delicious. Well, yeah, density, but the density is going to affect the taste. There's too much sugar in it, right? Oh, it's going to be too sweet. Okay. It's going to be gummy. And this also means that if you're off in England and you buy a cookbook, or you don't, you can't use our cup measures or anything with any exactly. foreign cookbooks. Exactly. And the truth is, if you buy a cookbook around the rest of the world, nearly every cookbook in in the rest of the world will measure every everything by weight. Anyway. So that's that's really yeah, the, the end wonderful. of it. Right. And that's the best scale to get. <laughs> this, this is my favorite. Here. You yeah. are a food Once nerd. You I'm are a food nerd, nerd and I love oh, that. I love that about you. I'm Dan, you can go to renegadekitchen.com. Wonderful. All right, up next, we're going to spend time with Dr. Cheryl Ross. She's going to give us the essential facts to prevent osteoporosis. Next. <laughs>